So if you check for performance, you'll see clearly that the Unisoc T7 250 actually uses the more powerful Cortex A75 uh, CPU cores. Hello and welcome to another video. My name is Jeffrey. This is the Inquisitive Universe and today we're going to be discussing the Snapdragon 6S 4G Gen 1 versus the Unisoc T7 250. Yeah, so let's go straight into it. Now, the Snapdragon 6S 4G Gen 1 is a budget processor that is a repackaged, rebranded, renamed Snapdragon 662 which originally showed up around 2019, 2020 and then it was forgotten for a while before it was resurrected last year by Qualcomm on behalf of Oppo because they wanted to use it for their Oppo A3 and A3X 4G variants which now they are currently using on the Oppo A5 Pro 4G which sells for around 200 USD. Yeah, I have done it. I've said a lot. I've done a lot on this processor so you can feel free to check the top of your screen then you know maybe after this one you'd watch what has already been said on this topic before. The next one here is the Unisoc T7250 which is actually a rebranded Unisoc T6 which is a budget processor and then we you can find it on phones that are around 89 90 100 usd so you can see the, the vast disparity there's like a hundred dollar gap in terms of value between both on, on the phones you'd find both processors right because you see the Unisoc T7 250 on phones like the Redmi A5 the Itel City 100 we sell for around 110 115,000 whilst you see Naira whilst you'd see uh, the uh, Snapdragon 6S 4G Gen 1 on the Oppo A5 Pro which sells for over 300,000 which is around 200 USD right 190 something 200 USD so let's go straight into the comparison and then i would continue the commentary at the end of this video so straight up right of course you know i always like to start with performance as usual performance is always key right so if you check for performance you will see clearly that the unisoc t7250 actually uses the more powerful cortex a75 uh, cpu cores clock speed notwithstanding a73 cpu cores are a bit dated now and will struggle against a75 and then you now have like for for the performance cores you have two a75 for the battery efficiency cores you're seeing two a55s compared to the a53s which are weaker on the snapdragon 6s 4g gen 1 side so when you move on you check you see for the gpu uh adreno 610 versus mali g57 mc2 now both gpus actually offer the same level of performance so it's really really hard to separate both of them but when it comes to the cpu side of things the unisoc t7250 actually has the advantage here albeit slightly it's the better performer slightly so you see now that they are both arm v8 um, processors the snapdragon 6s 4 gen 1 is actually made with an 11 nanometer samsung process but with samsung being samsung right a 12 nanometer uh, a tsmc process is actually going to catch up because we know that TSMC is actually the more efficient of the two between Samsung and TSMC. So when you put all of that together, when you put all of that together and then you go and check for the benchmarks to see which one actually performs, you can see clearly on Antutu that the Unisoc T7250 actually outperforms the Snapdragon 6S 4G Gen 1 when it comes to Antutu scores. You see around 263,000 on Antutu 10 for the T7250 and 248 around 250 for the snapdragon 6s 4g gen 1. now that isn't really that much of a huge gap right in terms of performance but however slightly albeit that the t7250 outperforms the snapdragon 6s 4g gen 1 it's still a gap it's still a small win right and then when you check for um, geekbench 6 just geekbench mostly just you know uh, uh, calculates or compares for just cpu performance alone you can see that the unisoc t7250 still again slightly outperforms the snapdragon 6s 4g gen 1. now when you see that one of this one is powering phones the t7250 is powering phones around the hundred dollar mark and then the 6s 4g gen 1 is, is powering phones around the 200 dollar mark it you now start to have to ask questions you have to start asking questions like what is going on here so let's let's keep this aside let's move on let's talk about ram now both of these ones they both use lpddr4x ram right that's what they both use and then they also both use ufs 2.1 storage they both support 1080p displays 
and then they both record 1080p video at 30 fps although the t7 250 can do it at 60 fps but most um, most smartphone oems just usually just cap it at 30 fps although it can do 60 fps so they are both it's it's been a tie so far when it comes to camera support the snapdragon 6 s 4 g gen 1 maxes out at 48 megapixel camera support the t7 250 can do up to 108 megapixel cameras that's one of the reasons it was rebranded from t615 to t7 250 however most smartphone OEMs are not going to be putting 108 megapixel cameras on a budget phone that's going to be sold around 100 dollars of course not they are mostly going to be capping it at 50 so we're going to be putting these ones together as a tie you know albeit slight advantage to the t7 250 right then when it comes to uh modems the communication they both support 4g lte uh although the slight advantage goes to the 6s 4g gen 1 because it can do um cat 13 download speeds whilst the t7 250 is stuck at cat 7 but the gap between cat 13 and cat 7 when it comes to download speed isn't really all that wide it's just like a few megabits per second that differentiates them right then when it comes to bluetooth advantage goes to the t7 250 because it supports bluetooth 5.2 as opposed to the slightly slower bluetooth 5.1 on the snapdragon 6 s 4g gen 1 and then they both support wi-fi 5. so overall overall if you put everything together overall the unisoc t7250 is more than a match for the snapdragon 6 s 4g gen 1 it actually outperforms it so when it comes to cpu gpu advantage clearly clearly goes to the unisoc t7250 ram it's going to be mostly most mostly a tie right although i have seen in cases where they're using emmc 5.1 on the sys s 4g gen 1 but generally if they both use ufs 2.1 for storage is going to be a tie cameras advantage to the t7 250 right displays it's going to be a tie uh, network connectivity it's mostly going to be a tie so why is it that oppo with the qualcomm snapdragon ccs 4g gen 1 is selling this same processor for over slightly over 200 usd or around 200 usd and the t7 250 is being sold for a hundred dollar less it is because of customers being brainwashed yes a lot of people are brainwashed to believe that anything with the snapdragon logo is premium that's why they will tell people there is a snapdragon processor inside that's what they've told their marketers to say that's what they've told your big youtubers i don't want to mention anybody's names that's what they've told them to say that there's a qualcomm snapdragon inside that it is going to be okay it's going to be good and then when people hear snapdragon they just believe it's this type of social engineering where they engineer people like mouse right yeah people are socially engineered to believe that just because something bears that title that it is premium it is not i would very much rather buy a phone with a unisoc t7250 than buy an overpriced device so that's the comparison make of this information what you will right i'm not really here to tell you what to do i just give you the information and i hope you act on it thank you very much for coming my name is jeffrey please make sure to like subscribe and share you know small actions like yours that helps small channels like mine we're going to spread the word and we're going to wake up a lot of people from all of this marketing nonsense that these companies are doing to take advantage of you know the less knowledgeable among us please spread the message my name is jeffrey and of course i'll see you next video cheers and bye bye